Now, I hope you're living in the power of expectancy because that's been our theme for this entire year. We've been living in expectancy for that which you believe and expect to be so is truly what will be your reality. If you expect it, if you're in that spirit of expectation, it opens the doors. It is that which then that you are assuming and believing to be so that unfolds for you in the journey of your life. This past week, I had a real experience with the very law of expectation. That law that says, as you believe, as you expect, so it is. Well, I went to purchase a new car. Now, my car, a 2004 Mercedes, well, she bit the dust this past week. That's right, having some electrical problems. The mechanic said, you know what? I'm afraid to tell you this, that the repairs on the electrical system on this car are going to be greater than the current value of the car. So the best thing is for you to just tow it away. And that meant I needed to go out and look for a new car. So I began to look online and was shopping for some cars, holding in mind the highest and best unfolding for me. Well, I began to believe that just said, you know what? All things are working together for good. I'm not worried. I'm not stressed. Everything's going to fall into place beautifully. So I began to look at a particular car model and holding in mind, thinking this is exactly what I'd love to have began to visualize it and began to hold in mind that this is uh, the kind of car I'm going to find as I go out car shopping uh, and I'm going to be able to locate exactly what I need and it'll just come together perfectly. That was my expectation. Now, coupling with that was the feeling, because I'm a firm believer that when we are specific about what we desire for God to unfold, what we desire for the universe to unfold within our lives, that it's really being specific about the feeling about the feeling about this automobile versus the material item. Oh yes, the certain model and certain make of a car I held in mind that that would be nice, but it really described or it, it was a symbol of the feeling of transportation, of that, having something that would be reliable, something that felt comfortable, something that I felt was affordable, something that I could truly take care of, I ongo all these feelings that began to summarize exactly what I was expecting to find. When we arrived at the dealership, well, I was looking at this certain model and I thought this is certainly what I'm holding in mind and I'm expecting to purchase. But when I sat in the vehicle, I didn't have the feeling. Like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. Something's not quite coming together. We sat in another uh, model and oh no, this doesn't quite seem right either. And we began to think, well, wait a minute, this is exactly what I was thinking, but it's not about what I'm thinking materially as much as what am I feeling? What am I expecting that I would uh, experience? Well, the gentleman said, you know what? There are a couple uh, other models over here that we'd love to have you look at. Uh, they are not the same uh, model that you've been looking for. It is something a little different. And I, well, let's go. And we came to another lot and I sat in this car and Robert and I both said, this is the car, this is the car. I, there was the feeling. Well, we had gone through the list of what the car offered and all of its great attributes, but sitting inside the car, there was that sense of, this is what we've been expecting. This is what we've been believing. This is exactly it. Uh, the interior was beautiful. The car was great. It was affordable. And it was just everything coming together so beautifully. You see, not holding on to a specific model in mind or material item, but holding onto the feeling, the feeling brought me to the right and perfect car. Right and perfect in so many ways. Because the previous model or type of car I was looking at, uh, the dealer said, you know, that's a very expensive car to repair. And it's going to have a lot of challenges for you. And the reason you're finding these used cars available is because the warranties have expired on all of them. So we have a lot of them. So what you've chosen is far better for you and truly meeting your needs really above and beyond what I was asking or thinking. It's parked out in the parking lot for those of you who want to see it after the service. <laughs> It is truly the manifestation of believing in the power of expecting everything to fall together good for my good. Now, here's the catch. It was wonderful to look at cars. 
because I said, you know what, unfortunately, I'm here to browse, to look, but I'm not able to purchase today because on Monday, I'm closing on the refinancing of my house, and I really can't disturb this process. I've got to wait until this is all finished. Uh, so I know I need a vehicle, and I know I'm without transportation now, but I just can't finalize this deal. But could you hold the car? He says, better than yet, I'll let you drive it off the lot. What? You can drive it off the lot, just simply put down a little bit of money on it, and it's yours, and you can come back next week after the house is closed and the refinancing is all done, and we'll settle up all the paperwork and everything will be completed. Wow. In the law of expectation, there is room for this or something better. This or something better as we live out our lives. So often we may get caught up on the specifics of a material item, but being open to say, what is the feeling that that which I truly desire in my life? When I work with that specifically and naming, this is how I want to feel, the universe brings to us exactly that which we desire and it fits perfectly and everything comes into alignment for us. You know, you get what you expect to be. Now, how many of you have been expecting today to be a dynamic service? Well, if you've come in the spirit of expectation, that's what you're receiving. All the joy of celebration, all the wonderful aspects of community coming together in this drumming, coming together to celebrate so many powerful things of an anniversary, a great past, a wonderful present, and a glorious future. Celebrating all of this together, well, if you've expected it, that's what's unfolding for you even now. Let me take you back to a time in ancient history, to a story found within the ancient truth of the scriptures. A familiar story, I'm sure that all of you know, the story of David and Goliath. David facing a great adversary, a tall giant, this nation of Israel in fear and trepidation, wondering as the giant called out, send me someone, send me one person and we'll go to battle rather than each nation going to battle with each other. But it will be the one who is the victor, that nation will be a slave or servant to the other. The one who is the victor will be the one who claims and says, I will be, our nation will be the number one and you will be the slave. And so Israel, all of Israel, the mighty army said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I don't think, I don't have the expectation. I don't think I'm possible, strong enough, mighty enough. I don't know if I could destroy the giant. Ah, David, the little shepherd boy, walks in with a high level of expectation high level of expectation. In fact, he just says, I don't need all this armor. I don't need all of these things that you may normally use in battle. I just need a stone and my slingshot. And with the one stone, he destroys the giant. How? In the law of expectation. Expecting, believing, assuming the law of expectation unfolding in great might for him. And it is the beautiful story of how the law of expectation operates within our lives and our world. But you may say, wait a minute, aren't we taught to lower our expectations? Don't have expectations too high because you're gonna be disappointed. We're thinking in our physical world, it's better to just not expect hardly anything at all and be pleasantly surprised if something good does happen. But let me tell you this, the universe will correspond with the level of expectation that you have. And we're also living in such fear. Well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't happen? Ah, that's our weak and wavering faith speaking out, saying, I don't know if I can believe it. I don't know if I can trust it. I don't know if it's really going to happen. I better lower my expectation. Let me lower it. Uh, let me lower it again. Let me lower it even more. Let's go down really, really low. Let's expect nothing. Let's expect that nothing's going to happen. And what happens in our lives? Nothing. How true this is in our lives. So as we lower our expectations thinking, you know what, maybe I don't deserve, or maybe it's God is withholding, or maybe it's not going to happen for me, or maybe it's not the right perfect plan for my life. So I just lower my expectations thinking constantly over and over again, less, 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 less. Let's just not expect anything. But the law of expectation says, that which you expect to be so will be so. So when we embrace this spiritual law, this is a very promise. 
that as we step out in faith with great expectation, it is matched. The very energy is there within us. For we move forward, not beyond, uh, we move toward, I should say, but not beyond what we can imagine, what we hold in mind. We're going to move toward it, but not beyond the level of our imagining. So if you're saying, well, I don't expect anything. I'm not really hoping for anything. I'm just lowering those expectations. We move toward, but we don't move beyond that level of the great imagination. We say, wait, I'm expecting incredible things. I'm believing. I'm assuming. I am knowing that the power of God is at work here now in this moment unfolding for my highest and best. You see, it's all about our outlook. There's this wonderful poem that says two men look through prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw stars. It's all about how you choose to look at life. What you see depends upon where you choose to look and where you look depends upon what you expect to see. Now, if you're expecting not much, you may not be looking in the places and in the ways and looking with eyes wide open to the highest and best of your life. Here's an example. I find a lot of people will say, you know, I don't believe so-and-so can be trusted, or I don't believe this can be trusted. And so because of this, they look through a filter of their uh, view and this world with expectation. And you know what happens is they find evidence to support it because they're looking for these things. This can't be trusted. This is not going to work out. My partner, Robert, was interior des in interior design work. And he would find clients who'd say, you know, every piece of furniture that comes delivered to my house always has a scratch, always has a flaw. There's something always wrong. And that was their expectation. It got to be so uh, that we just knew that that person was going to be expecting a flaw that we said, we better make sure there's a flaw there <laughs> because it seemed like that was the high level of expectation. And because they believed it to be so true and their expectation was so high, they began to analyze every little thing and finding a thread or a little scratch on underneath a piece of furniture or whatever it may be because they expected it to be so. And that's where they were looking. That's where they chose to have their eyes uh, viewing and expanding and looking on the very areas of saying, I just don't believe. I have the assumption. I expect less than. So what happens is by expanding our beliefs about what is possible, we can change our experience in this life. We can expand, we can grow, to, we can stretch to things being larger in our beliefs. Uh, what is possible can change within our very journey of our day-to-day -day experience by expanding the beliefs to say, I expect something great. I expect something wonderful unfolding for me even now. You know, the uh, story of David and Goliath. Getting the, the giant with the stone was really easy. But the challenge was really all about the negative beliefs that hold people back. I believe there probably were other in that uh, um, Israeli army of the story of that day and age who probably could have destroyed the giant who could have gone to battle, or maybe were also good with a slingshot and a simple stone. But what they lacked was the belief. The negative beliefs began to overpower them. I don't think I can. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's going to happen for me. I am uh, expecting failure. And you know what? That's what their greatest challenge was, to overcome these negative fears. So we must start by creating some expectations, creating some expectations within our life. Before you can do it, you have to believe it, okay? So let's just say, for example, you're praying for rain. Did you bring an umbrella? Well, if you're expecting rain and you're praying for rain and that's your belief system and you're believing for rain to happen, why wouldn't you be carrying an umbrella? But so many people, you know, I'm praying for rain and I want to say, what's your expectation? And how are you living this expectation out? If you're believing for a job, you need to begin by writing your resume and preparing your interview outfit. 
Because this then says, I am expecting the job offer to come. I am getting ready. I am in preparation. I'm living the law of expectation of that which I believe to be so is unfolding for my life. How about this? You're believing for a relationship. Well, you need to prepare for your life partner. How about cleaning out a few drawers or some closet space to get ready? To say, I am prepared, I am ready for my life partner, for this spouse to come into my life because I am believing and expecting it so I've done everything I can to prepare. Remember the old fashioned hope chest? Remember where young ladies used to acquire things and have a little bit of a dowry? It was all in great expectation expectation that they would start collecting and setting things aside because they knew that one day they were going to enter into a wonderful relationship, a marriage. There was the power of expectation placed in that creating that hope chest. How about you? What are you expecting? Are you expecting something? Then how are you demonstrating the law of expectation in your life? Because if you're expecting it, then your actions need to Compliment, work with, or be respective of that which you're believing to transpire within your life. So really, when we look at this, the law of expectation is uh, every positive thought is a prayer. And every prayer is answered. Wow, every prayer is answered? Well, if you're expecting, if you're believing, if you're assuming it to be so, Every positive thought is a prayer and every prayer is answered because you're expecting it so. So your heart is wide and open. Your eyes are illuminated to understand the spiritual work that's taking place even in the midst of the moment of your great faith being expressed within your life. For the law of expectation reminds you of your inherent power to shape your life through the images and expectations that you create. Now, the trouble is, we've got a lot of things that sometimes we need to just clean out to create the greater, uh, shall we say, flow or to allow the expectations to rise within our life. I'd like to suggest that you do a little doubt inventory. That may mean taking a moment to just write out all the doubts you have that are holding you back from the law of expectation going into work in its fullness. So claim those doubts, speak those doubts, name those doubts. In all ways, just begin to maybe shout those doubts, whatever you may be. I'm doubting because of this, or I don't believe because of that, and I need to name them because what we need to do is uproot them. That's right. We're pulling them out of the garden of our mind. We need to do a little weeding. We got to get these doubts out because they're holding us back from our power of expectation working to its full extent. You know, where those who had gathered the uh, believing for uh, the ability to create the first airplane, those scientists, those who inventors who've gotten together began to think about this. Well, there was a lot of doubts that they had to deal with. One is gravity is pretty evident in our world. And we're going to fly working against gravity and people would say, wait a minute, gravity is going to pull you down. How will you soar into the clouds? How will you fly? Do you understand? Well, they had to address that negative doubt. They had to address the very things that were happening in within the physical and the inventors of the first plane had to banish all doubts to be able to move forward in their very plans and their ideas, because otherwise they would have said, you know what? It's just not going to happen. And we expect it not to happen because what we're seeing here in the physical realm is that gravity is too powerful to even overcome. So let's just give up and go home. But there were those who said, let's banish this. Let's let go of this doubt. Let's just take a doubt inventory, write these things down. Yes, there's gravity, but we can overcome it. Yes, there's this, but we can overcome that. Yes, we can, uh, you know, man has never, wasn't born with wings, but ah, we know how to create all that is necessary for the plane to flop. So let's remove these doubts by creating a list and naming them, then denying them. That's pulling up those weeds, pulling up the weeds, get uproot those, say, you know what? The power of God in me, through me, around me is greater, greater than this. 
Why am I allowing this fear to keep me from expecting my highest and best? Why am I allowing these doubts to diminish the power of my believing? For the work we do is replacing self-defeating doubts with vivid images. Vivid images and creating new beliefs with clear intentions. I now see myself a success. I see myself in this way. I see my experience unfolding in this way. I see it and I hold in mind the clear vision of what it is that I'm expecting to believe. But we must have this expectation in full power and strength within our lives because let me tell you this, the expectation will attract the evidence. It's gonna attract everything that you need to unfold. I went out to buy a car with great expectation, believing it to unfold for me, believing that even in the midst of what may seem a challenging time and to say, you know what, you really can't buy today, but I know that the spirit is working out for, all, for me for my highest and best. And I expect that. I expect everything to fall together beautifully. And when we live in that expectation, it begins to attract all the evidence of that which you desire to unfold in your life. For the law of expectation teaches us that what we focus on expands. And in today's world, we've got a lot of people who are simply focusing on the problems and not the solutions. So we're focusing on the problems and we're talking about the problems and they are expanding because we're giving great energy to them. But ah, what if we make a switch and we put all of our energy into a focus on solutions that what we're going to just hold in mind is that the answer is there or the answer is coming. The answer is unfolding. And I expect to experience the solution. I expect to experience the answer unfolding within my life. So what it is so important for us to grasp is this word focus, focus, focus. Where is your focus? Is it on the sense that it can't be so? Or is it on the sense of it can be so? You see, this is the unfolding of this powerful law of expectation within our law. Now, today, we're celebrating these wonderful anniversaries. I look back and think, four years in this great facility, this facility of 36,000 square feet that has been a dynamic spiritual center in the city of Landa for the last four years, bringing together all kinds of exciting workshops, classes, teachers, counselors, therapists, life coaches, and on goes the list coming together. Seeing over a thousand people come through our doors during the week in all kinds of exciting programming. We look back and think, wow, the power of expecting dynamic things to unfold became our reality. And we're celebrating four years. During this pandemic, we're excited about all the things that are unfolding for us through multimedia, through live streaming. All kinds of new possibilities are unfolding for us because we're living in the realm of expectancy and that this building is serving the greater purposes of the vision that we have. We're celebrating five years of Emerson Institute, celebrating the wonderful teaching that's being offered and the opportunity for people to achieve goals of a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate of spiritual studies. We're loving the fact that people are auditing classes from all around the world, and we're celebrating the opportunity to share spiritual truth in dynamic new ways. We're excited to say that we have been six years part of the affiliated New Thought Network, a network of congregations, spiritual communities coming together to share resources with one another, to help and lift and uphold one another, to hold in wonderful consciousness the highest and best is unfolding for everyone. And there's not a sense of competition. There's not a sense of uh, who is better, who is less than. It's this wonderful sense of the highest and best for unfolding for everyone. It's a powerful network. We love celebrating this connection that we have. And then, of course, can you believe it? You're 48 years old. That's right. City of Light, you look fantastic for 48. And uh, you may have a little wrinkles around the edges, but you know what? You're looking fine because this ministry has been a viable ministry sharing the message of compassion, inclusion, and empowerment for 48 years in the city of Atlanta. 
I wonder what those founding members thought as they gathered for the very first Sunday, as they came together. What was their level of expectation? Did they expect it to be that we would arrive where we are today in the year of 2020? Did they expect the type of unfolding of goodness and belief and faith, the empowerment and the spirit of inclusion to expand and grow? The wonderful compassion of feeding the hungry and the homeless and weekly meals providing for those in need, food bank program, clothing closet, and on goes the list of compassion outreach. I wonder if their expectation was that high. I have to believe that they set the foundation saying, I believe all things are possible and great things are in store. Because that foundation must have set then in order all the things that we're experiencing today. But as we celebrate this anniversary, I want you to know that our work is not over. It's time for us to create a fresh vision of who we intend to become and to live it in the law of expectation. We expect more. We expect greater. We expect the unfolding of even greater things than what we've already experienced. And some of us would say, wow, I'm almost exhausted because the goodness of God has unfolded in so many dynamic ways. It's been miracle after miracle. And we have to change our word from miracle to normal after normal because that's how God has unfolded for us in the miraculous. Each year we take time to look back at stories of how God has blessed and made a way when there seems to be no way. And that's the law of expectation. That we just say, well, even though the world may say, there's no way, there is no way, we press forward. And we believe that God is making the way when there seems to be no way. The law of expectation is, is really illustrated for us as the children of Israel stood on the edges of the Red Sea, knowing that Pharaoh was behind them. They had just left in exodus from Egypt, moving out into their liberation and their freedom, but standing at the water's edge of the deep, the dips of the Red Sea, thinking, how are we going to cross? How is this going to happen? There is no boat. There's no bridge. There's no pathway for us. But what did they do? They moved forward in expectation and invited to walk into the waters. The waters begin to part and a way was made for them as they began to move in this law of expectation. So here we are celebrating an anniversary. What will the next 48 years look like? What are the next five, six, seven years gonna look like as we begin to expect even greater things unfolding for us in our life? It will be as we expect. It will be as we assume. It will be as we believe. So I invite you to join with me in the power of believing and expecting. Financial blessing, financial uh, provision, uh, that we may continue to operate in the level of abundance that God has intended for our lives. That we may constantly expect and believe that we're going to expand ministries and do more touch more lives than ever before and empower people through this wonderful message of the power of God unfolding in unique and special ways in people's lives. And the compassion programs that we offer and the teaching programs we offer, they're expanding. I see them now for even as we are tearing down walls in the Dr. Angelo Pazello Wisdom Center, we are doing so with great expectation that we will complete the project in a timely fashion and that will open the doors for incredible ministries to unfold. Wow, we have a lot to celebrate. Coming up, a lot more to celebrate because we're living in the law of expectation. Today, I invite you to embrace that law. It's a very promise. It is a very promise that is uh, brought about through the power of our believing, assuming it's so, the power of expectation within your life. I invite you to join with me in expecting great things. I'm believing for something amazing for you. I'm expecting to hear your stories as you call, email me, text me, uh, whatever it may be, sharing this week, God has unfolded amazing things. Doors have opened. That which I believe for is mine and even this or something better unfolding for me. 
Let's believe together. The law of expectation is at work even now. Amen.